Hi, this is Emily, and I got a request from God's Girly Girl 1 the other day on a different video asking if I could do a technique or process video. So while I'm thinking in my mind about how to do that, I thought I'd share with you some of the things that I do with pressed flowers um, to give you inspiration and ideas about some things that maybe you can do on your own. I just got back from a show, so some of my stock is a little bit down, but I will show you some of the things that uh, that I take with me when I do shows, or sometimes I'll sell on my, my personal website. I'll start with cards, and the smallest cards that I do are gift and closure cards, and these are some of the ones that I'll try to get the glare off some of the ones that I have right now. And let me say, if at any time you get bored with what I'm doing, just fast forward. I'm recording this live because I never seem to get any of the videos off my computer up onto YouTube. So I'm just going to record live, and however it turns out, it turns out. I'll take one of these out of the sleeve. So you can see what it looks like. I, I put these in clear sleeves. I don't put them in envelopes because I figure if someone wants to use them on the card, they can put tape on the back. And then the flower uh, picture is, is part of the decoration for the package. So that's my logic there. And inside it's simply blank. Except for I did put a little uh, a butterfly stamping. And then on the back... It just says 100% real pressed flowers and foliage, and then it's got my M's logo. So that's a gift and closure card. If I can get it back in the envelope, of course, when you're recording, things don't go <laughs> quite the way you want. Uh, then the next thing up from that in the card department are real flower bookmarks. And again, I put these in sleeves. It's got the 100% real flower and foliage on the back again with a logo. And I use um, some satiny type ribbon to stick out of the, the pages. I should probably say before I talk about this, let me set these down for a second. The gift enclosure cards, the flowers are protected by contact paper. And when I go into the technique and process video, I'll talk more about the different kinds of things that you can cover your flowers with. Um, but this is protected with contact paper. The only surface that's covered is the front. And I really do like the effect because it doesn't really take away from the looks of the flowers. It protects them. You don't have to worry about somebody breaking them. And it's very inexpensive to use and it works great. There are a couple different kinds of contact paper out there. My preference is for the Cover Magic brand. And again, I'll talk more about that in, an, in another video. The reason why I went back to that is because it's different for bookmarks. In the early days, when I started doing press flowers, and that's been decades and decades ago, um, I use contact paper for the bookmarks because I didn't have a hot laminating machine. So if you want to make a bookmark and you want to protect your flowers, then just go to the store and pick up some contact paper because it's very affordable. But when you take it up another notch, I personally prefer bookmarks to be hot laminated. And in this case, it's laminated both on the front and the back. And so I laminate them and then I cut around the ed close to the edges to finish it off. And in this case, the, the corner's rounded. So to me, a hot laminate bookmark is much more professional, especially when I'm selling to the public, than in the early days when I basically used to, you know, give them away and do for friends. So here's here are some bookmarks. I was playing around with doing some edging down here. Generally speaking for bookmarks, I will do the design on a on a 
another piece of paper. So for example, this gradiated bluish um, background is paper that I create the arrangement on and then I put that on top of the cardstock and then I laminate as opposed to this one where there is no other backing paper that the flowers are put on. The flowers are put directly on the cardstock on this one. So I just, I vary it. I don't, I don't really have a set rule. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but generally speaking, I will, I will put it on a backing paper first because if I mess something up or I don't like the design, I don't like wasting the whole bookmark. You know, it's a lot easier to, you know, do something with the paper. This one, um, a couple of years ago, I got one of those die cutting machines with some die cuts. And so this one is paper, backing paper. And then this design here, the lighter part, is a die cut. And then I put the flowers on the die cut. And then I put the die cut on the, on the backing. And then, of course, on the card. So there are some different ways that you can do the bookmarks. While we're on the subject of bookmarks, I also do corner bookmarks. And here's, here's some, uh, let me get the right way here. Okay, it goes this way. So here's some, this one, and this one. And then uh, for shows, I stand it up in a little booklet with a couple pages, just to show how they go. So that when you use a corner bar bookmark in your book, you simply put it on the corner and close your book. On the back of these, I did stamp a little butterfly and another little embellishment on the corner, just so that the, that the back isn't blank. So I do, right now, currently, two different kinds of bookmarks. And then gift and closure cards. Uh, so here's here's some different ones. Again, I, I don't have very many right now. This is probably one of my favorites right now. And again, you can see that um, some of the things that the flowers are on have been die cut. This one, for example, let me put this uh, container down. This one is a three panel. So it's it's got the cutout in the front. And then this is another panel. And then this is the inside for writing your note. And then this is the back. And the flowers are put onto a separate sheet of paper, which is the brownish. And then it is put between this, this backing card, which is folded over right here, and the front. And again, the nice thing about using the separate paper is you don't ruin a whole card if for some reason you mess up your design or you don't like it or you go, oh, I don't, I don't like it for that card or that color background on the card. I want to use it for something different. Um, and the, the size of this brown paper is probably, you know, it's it's almost the size of the card itself, just, just enough that it doesn't bunch up. This one... Uh, this one is the gradiated paper that's cut in a square and then a die cut scalloped oval and then another cut oval but that's just a regular edge not die cut and then the actual flower design is right here this scallop and in this case, the contact paper, what I did was I made the design on a square piece of paper. And in this case, it's, it's this lighter color here. So I made the design on a square piece of paper. And then I covered it with contact paper. And then I went to the die cut, my, my die cutting machine. 
uh, which is just a, a manual die cutting machine, and I used the, a scalloped oval, and I cut it. And what that does is it, it kind of helps to really seal down the edge of the, uh, the laminate around it, and of course it gives it a finished look, and then of course I put that then on, on the other background. And again, most of my cards right now are, well, I don't know, I'm doing different things, I don't know, I can't remember what I put in here. Okay, again, just the butterfly motif, and then blank inside, and then my stamps on the back. I'm starting to do some cards with a, a, a little writing insert in the inside. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Um, this card is, uh, this is a die cut background. And then I did the flowers on the background on the die cut. Um, I think this one is entirely lemon, is entirely, yeah, the whole surface of this, um, I put this die cut paper on top of the cardstock after I did the flower arranging. And then I contact papered the whole thing. So there's contact paper on here too. This whole thing has contact paper on it. Because I die cut it, I die cut the paper before I did the flowers, as opposed to this one, where I did the flowers on a rectangular background, covered it with contact paper after that, then cut it. So this was cut after I did the flower arrangement, and this background was cut before I did the flower arrangement, which is why I had to do contact paper over the whole thing. And you really wouldn't know it. I mean, it, it, it's, it really works great. Uh, anything else I want to highlight here? Oh, here, this one. Um, this one, I don't know if you can see it, and it's the contact paper is only on the flower arrangement. And for this one, I put the panel here. So this is a panel. And again, I don't know if you can see it, but this has been uh, run through the, the die cutting machine that also embosses in an embossing folder. So there's actually an embossing here, but I don't know how good, good it picks up on camera. And I do a lot of, um, of uh, ed, uh, edging with the... Uh, Well, I'll put that back later. I'll bore you with me fumbling around there. Um, okay, so those are the ma my main card line: gift enclosures, bookmarks, and uh, and uh, all occasion cards. Then I do pictures. I don't have any big pictures right now to show you. Eight eight <clears throat> eight by tens, five by sevens, eleven by fourteens, etc. And then I've also done larger pieces too, but I just don't have any right now. So these are curio pictures. Um, these are some frames that I found a while back. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. And these little cute little easels. And these pictures, um, this one, they are hot laminated because they don't have glass. So these are hot laminated. Again, the flowers are put on, uh, on the panel. And in this case, it's a uh, it's a fancy paper with some threads in it, and then it's laminated, and then it's cut to fit the frame, and then on the and then the frame, um, I do actually this one can go either way this way, or you can put or you can do it that way. Um, this is uh, brown paper that is dampened and then glued around the edge of the frame and then it the paper shrinks when it when it dries it's not so, the paper isn't sopping wet when you put it on but it's damp and then that causes it to tighten up and look professional now behind this paper i also have magnets so that this can be used for a curio picture or a magnet so it's got a dual purpose someone can decide which way they want to use it 
this curio picture is this is a heavy metal frame and it's got glass in it and so it's the pictures are put on the on the or excuse me the flowers are put on the the panel uh, which I think is cardstock yeah and then it's cut to size and then it's put into the frame and then the frame of course has a little easel back on it I just think these are so cute I've got some oval and some squares going back to the greeting card something else I've been playing around with is uh, easel back card so this has this is up on um, some foam background it to raise it up so that this has something to to lean against and this is a um, silver plated butterfly and then it folds up like this when you want to uh, send it I do believe that um, these thicker cards uh, take extra postage and when I sell them I put bubble wrap and another uh, scallop piece of cardstock in there and some extra protection so that it's ready to go when someone puts it in, in an envelope so it's a lot thicker when it's in the envelope and it probably and it needs to be mailed as a thick mail piece uh, so that's what this is um, it's cut with a uh, scallop and then, uh, and then this panel, this panel here, this one, is glued to, to the bottom part of this. This doesn't currently have a sentiment on it, but I have separate sentiments, so uh, I'll oftentimes take separate sentiments with me. And if someone wants, say, a happy birthday sentiment, then I will put it on the back, uh, kind of like a to order situation because you never know what somebody wants a card for some people want them blank some people want a birthday some people want sympathy thank you um, and it takes so long quite frankly to make these cards there let me take a sidetrack if you are intending to do this with a thought that you're gonna be able to make a living off of it um, the chances of that happening are relatively slim. I've been doing this since I was a teenager and that's been a forever ago. And um, I've never been able to make a living. It, it, it pays for itself and I make some, you know, spending money and, it, and I enjoy doing it. But as far as, uh, you know, supporting anybody or, or actually paying lots of bills, no, nah, it, it's never come to that. I'm not saying that you know there are businesses that make money with it um it's just not something that I've ever ever been uh able to do so that's an easel card uh something else that I do more around the holidays is I have these porcelain ornaments I have a a round more of a regular ball looking one and then this is a snowflake one and so I um do the panel of the pressed flowers and then uh, put them, there's a, this is recessed. It, it, there's a circle in here that's recessed. And then I have these acrylic display stands so they can hang. Uh, stickers. I like to, I have a, a machine that cuts different shapes or you can use scissors and cut shapes. Uh, these have been run through a coal laminating machine, or you could use the contact paper. And then if you have a, a machine that will put sticky on the back, or a way to add sticky on the back, then, um, then you can make stickers. All these have a sticky back, so you just peel the paper off and they stick down. So you can put these on your journals or on envelopes, or you can use them for some other design element. And I did different sizes. So I like, I have, I have a lot of fun making stickers. Uh, something else I've been getting into lately, I, I'm having a thing about uh, altered journals. And 
these are the little mini uh, composition notebooks. And again, this is a die cut with a pansy on a scalloped circle. Um, I am a paper fanatic. I absolutely love paper. I, I don't know if I'm the only one, <laughs> but I love paper. I don't know what it is. So anyway, um, this is from those, those stacks that you can get at, at, the, uh, at the stores. And so I, uh, I, I also did the inside, so it's just a little note. And then I do the, and then I did the back, and that's the graduated paper. I just uh, did a little ivy leaf uh, stamping, and then the back is just um, some paper and a a uh, die cut butterfly. So there's one. Now this one I tried to make a little bit more masculine. I thought, oh, maybe a guy wants a little pocket journal. Who knows? Um, so this is actually uh, metal that I, um, thin metal, that it uh, it went through the uh, die cutting machine. But since the theme of the show that I was at was, for me, was real flowers, it's like, okay, how do I do real flowers if I'm doing trying to do a uh, more masculine motif? So I thought, okay, I'll just use uh, leaves. And so that's why there's just leaves on here, and here's some more, uh, some more metal. And then this is a spiral bound, spiral spiral bound notebook. Uh, again, there's here's the real pansy. This is um, that butterfly, pretty butterfly paper. Then on the inside is again another panel, and this is just a, a little gold. It's a metallic stamping, and then on the back another butterfly motif. And this is some actual paper that's got embedded uh, f flowers and leaves and stuff in it. I love this texture paper. Then I am also into doing paperweights. And I, I also grow, in addition to pressed flowers, um, dried flowers, like aquacolinium and straw flowers. And this is a paperweight with a... Um, with a everlasting flower in it. And then here's one with just pre this is press flowers. It's a strontia. And then here's a heart shape. It's got roses and larkspur bidden petals. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, magnets. I like to do magnets. Here's uh, Larkspur. Now, this has some resin on top. And putting resin over flowers, real flowers, is a challenge. And I have spent so much time finding out different ways to do different things. And again, that's something that I, I would go into on a, a process or technique video. But suffice it to say, there's a lot involved. Um, for those of you that like uh, bottle caps, this one's done in the bottle cap motif. Um, here's another, another one. Then, now these little frames, this is acrylic, it's, it's already its own easel back. I've had, I don't know where I found them, I found them years and years ago, and I, I had them in somewhere, and then I, I, I stumbled upon them here a while back, and went, oh, I forgot I had those. And so um, they've got a recess in them, and so I, I don't have very many left. I wish I, I had more because I really like them. Uh, but they're just, they stand on their own, and it's just a really cute little display. So this is another curio picture. And then I've been getting into pressed flower jewelry. And here's one. This is a actual uh, Larkspur Blossom. 
so there's the back and here's the front. Uh, this is this block. The, the jewelry is jeweler's grade resin, whereas uh, these are are um, are not which helps to make them a little bit more affordable. Again, it's it's very difficult to put resin on a real blossom and have it stay flat and not get messed up. Um, but that, anyway, that's what it is. It's, it's real resin and uh, it's just on the blossom. Then I've got all these, these charms. This one says uh, love. And then there's a Swarovski crystal uh, on there. Here's uh, one. Excuse me, I'm shaking the camera. Here's one that I really personally like this. It's got a real vintage feel. And it's a, a pansy. There's a lot of reflection in here. But um, it's got a glass dome on it. And... Uh, I just think it's really pretty. I really like it. You can see where I have my chain bunched up there. Um, another one. This has got a bronze tone chain. And there's the back. And this is a, uh, a, a Queen Anne's lace. I really like this one. It reminds me of like a snowflake or something. I think that this will be wonderful at, uh, during the holidays because of the, the way that it looks. So I think that's about, uh, about it. I, let me make a side note. Um, I also do what's called photo reel bookmarks and gift enclosures and all um, and all occasion cards because I can sell them for less because obviously they are um, photographed from an original design but they aren't real flowers and so here's here's a, an example of photo real in other words this is from an original design that I did but these have been printed, um, color printed, and then uh, fixed to the cardstock. And so there, there's no contact paper because there doesn't need to be. But, you know, there is a protective finish on it. And so it's the same principle as the real ones. So I won't take them out of here. Um, but they're just not real flowers. And you can see I have a stack of them here. And again, I've got, I also have them in bookmarks and all occasion cards. So someone can, if they like the design, they can get the photo reel. But if they want a, something a little bit more expensive as a keepsake, then they can uh, get the one with the real flowers. Okay, I think that gives you an all-around view of some of the things that I do with flowers. So, go for it. Have fun. I uh, hope I didn't bore you with this video, and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you want to visit my website, I'm at emsplace.com, E-M-S-P-L-A-C-E.com. Or if uh, you are purchasing for men and you or your guy is into wet shaving, uh, then you can visit my main website, which is shaveplace.com. Dot com. That's geared toward men's wet shaving. So again,